Gear Seekers, I'm Nick. On Christmas Day, one of our amazing community members and one of our good friends, Ronnie from Tech Therapy, sent me an Amiga 1200. That's a Christmas present. And I've wanted an A 1200 for the better part of 20 years, but they've either been crazy expensive to buy here or they've been just impossible to find. I decided that I wanted to use this Amiga 1200 for a series of videos where I'm gonna be upgrading it as much as I possibly can. If you haven't subscribed yet, make sure you hit that button right now and turn on that little bell to receive notifications. We upload basically every single day of the week, so do yourself a big old favor and make sure you're subscribed. In this video, I'm going to do the first upgrade on my Amiga 1200 and change the Kickstart ROM from the standard Kickstart 3.0 ROM that was in this machine when I got it to the brand new, yeah, you heard correctly, the brand new Kickstart 3.1.4 ROM. And this ROM supports Amiga OS 3.1.4 that was released towards the end of 2018 and also Amiga OS 3.9, which I'm very, very interested in. And yeah, th this is kind of like a very loose how-to guide, so don't shoot me if I do something wrong. This is a retro computing series. If you're not interested in old computers, I'm sorry, but old computers are a huge passion of mine. These videos will come out whenever I get new bits for the A1200, so there is no schedule for the series at all. I just wanted to make this super clear from the beginning as well. I'm in no way an Amiga expert, and I'll never ever claim to be an Amiga expert. I've learned everything that I know about Amigas when I was really, really young, so everything that I'm gonna be doing in this series is basically me relearning everything that I know and that I remember about Amiga computers. The only difference is now I'm armed with the power of the internet, so it's a lot easier to find information. These are the two Kickstart 3.1.4 EEPROMs that I bought from an eBay seller. On the A1200, the Kickstart actually requires two physical EEPROM chips, or ROM chips. To use these, you're going to need to go to Hyperion's website, I'll put a link to that in the description as well, to actually purchase Amiga OS 3.1.4 before the seller will actually allow you to purchase these from him because they need proof of purchase to validate your license. The two ROM chips for the A1200 are a high and a low chip. You need both of these chips in your system to use the Kickstart ROM. It also includes a, <laughs> a little bit of documentation to show you which one is the high and the low chip and which sockets they actually go in. At first I was a little bit worried that I wouldn't know which socket to put each chip in, but here you go. He's labeled them for me to make it nice and easy so I can't mess it up. Pretty sweet. And yeah, the packaging, uh, it could be a little bit better, but it all arrived in working order. Right, let's uh, get to actually changing the chips out. What you want to do is remove the case screws from your A1200. Now, my A1200 has definitely seen better days, and it only has, I think, three or four of the original screws in there. I'm not even sure if they're the original screws at all. But yeah, basically all you need to do is remove those on the back side of it and then you can lift the top half away from the keyboard so you can get access to all of the bits. Right under the keyboard you'll notice the two kickstart ROM chips. Now actually over the weekend I received some 3.1 ROMs that I switched out just to play around with and test. They're the Cloanto ROMs and yeah I, I installed them I didn't think it was worth filming. You'll also notice I've got a CF reader that was in here when I got the A1200 from Ronnie. It's very very, very good and I've swapped it out with the 32 gig CF card. Now I've got a couple OS's floating around and a bunch of different CF cards so I can experiment with some stuff. Like I mentioned these are the two Cloanto Kickstart 3.1 ROMs. I've just got a bit of white tape to hide the license key. I'm going to remove both of these ROM chips. Now the way I'm going to do this is a very very janky way. The way that I usually do EEPROM chips is get a flat screwdriver under one side and gently lift up one side of the EEPROM. And then I go to the other side and I gently, very gently lift it. Oh, that just popped out. Wasn't expecting that to happen. Maybe because I've only had the ROM in there a couple days. And yeah, just rinse and repeat that process on both sockets. Just be very careful that you don't damage the main board of the Amiga and you don't damage the Kickstart ROMs. They should come out pretty easily without too much force. 
you'll notice on this part of the socket that the ROM chips don't actually occupy these pins on the end. When you're installing your new Kickstart ROM chips, you'll want to have them towards the right hand side of the socket and leave the left hand pins all the way open. You don't want them to be in because you can cause damage to your system. Now I'm going to show you the way that I would usually install EEPROM chips. It's got a little divot in it and that actually shows you what side is the correct side to install it on the socket because the socket also has that little divot in it. And you'll notice that it won't go in, like the pins just won't line up. I'm going to show you a thing that I've done on EEPROM chips over the years to get them to fit. You get a flat surface like a table and you put the chip down on an angle and put a little bit of weight on the pins to bend them inwards. Be very, very careful. Don't put too much force in it, but put enough to bend the pins inward. And then you should be able to socket the chip very, very easily. Now apply force on both sides evenly and don't press too hard. It should just pop in with a firm press on each side. And yeah, you want to rinse and repeat that for the second EEPROM chip as well. This one was a little bit harder to get in, but we got it in there in the end. To check that we actually got this to work properly, I'm going to remove the CF card and boot the Amiga without any bootable devices in it, because as you're about to see when we power this guy up, you're going to see the kickstart version on the boot screen. You'll have to forgive my capture quality for the Amiga because I don't have any RGB cables for the monitor output yet. I'm still waiting for those to arrive so I'll be able to capture the Amiga a lot better in future videos. All I did was plug it into my Blackmagic capture card with the composite output. And yeah, it's uh, it's not great, but it'll, it'll do for demonstration purposes to show you that it worked. I threw the CF card back into the Amiga and booted into Amiga OS 3.1.4. I prepared this in WinUAE. There are quite a few guides on YouTube to figure out how to do this. There's also a video made recently by the Guru Meditation that I will put in the top right hand corner right now that will show you how to install the icons and Amiga OS 3.1.4. You'll also notice that my A1200 is completely stock and it has no expansion cards, it has no accelerators, it doesn't have extra RAM. That's because I'm saving all of that stuff for future videos. If you're interested in grabbing a set of these new Kickstart ROMs for your Amiga 1200, I'll drop a link to the eBay listing down below that I got these from. Just be aware though, you'll need to have already purchased Amiga OS 3.1.4 from Hyperion's website. And then you need to send the seller the proof of purchase when you buy the ROM chips on eBay. The two EEPROMs cost me around 20 Aussie dollars delivered. Actually, not a bad price when you think about it for a set of Kickstart ROMs. Anyway, huge shout outs to Todd's Nerd Cave, Modern Vintage Gamer, and Dan Wood for getting me excited about Amigas again. It's because of their Amiga related content over the years that my passion for Amigas has never ever died. If you like this video, please like and subscribe. If you didn't like this video, you know what to do and tell us what you hated about it. Once again, thank you so very much for watching. I'm your boy Nick with Gear Seekers. You peak, we seek. And I just wanted to mention as well, this morning, or well, wait, no, you guys are seeing this the next day, but yeah, we hit 10,000 subscribers. Very, very exciting stuff. Let's see you guys at 20K. And yes, we do have a 10,000 subscriber build special coming very, very soon, so stay tuned.